Hello, I'm Larry Brooks and welcome to this edition of Smart Growth Walker County. Uh, today my guest is going to be Commissioner B.B. Haskell. Uh, today she's going to be talking about uh, property taxes and also sales taxes and what that's going to mean uh, for our community today and also in the future. Commissioner, welcome. Uh, we appreciate you uh, being with us again on this edition of Smart Growth. Uh, we uh, invited you here today to talk about uh, taxes, and so uh, we're excited about uh, starting that conversation. Well, thank you for inviting me, Larry. Let me just say that it has been an honor and a privilege to serve the people of Walker County for the last 15 years. Yes, Actually, I've been serving them longer than that, but I've been serving them as their elected commissioner for the last 15 yes, years. And during that time, well, actually, Walker County is a poor county. And we have never had much of any reserves. Mm -hmm. And we have never had really high taxes. And the people don't want to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, excessively, I should say. And so, actually, I have worked very, very hard to keep those taxes the lowest in the state for most of the 13 years that I never raised taxes. And a lot of things have happened. We had the 9-11 thing, and that caused our economy to fall some. Then we went through the Marsh Crematory thing, and that cost us a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I didn't raise taxes. I managed to make it through those things. And uh, then when we had the downturn of 2008, it really hit hard. Sure. And since that time, our digest, our property digest, which determines what a mill will bring in, we have lost $100 million in property values between that time and now. So what used to bring in $1.5 million for one mill now only brings in $1 million. Well, let's make sure that the viewers understand this about the digest. Now, the digest is not something that you set, is that no, correct? No, that is the, the Board of Assessors and their employees value property and they put it down and at the end of the year they take a look and see what every parcel of property's value is and they compile that and that determines what the value of property is in Walker County mm -hmm. and then that also determines what one mill of taxes will bring in. And, and so... It has increased over the years, but right now it has dropped. Well, let me clarify this as well, because I think that there is probably some confusion about that. When we talk about the Walker County Assessor, now he is um, a, uh, uh, an agent of the state of Georgia, isn't that correct? Well, they are county employees, but they work at the pleasure of the Georgia Department of Revenue, and they have to work according to their instruction. Sure. They have to keep values at a certain level. 40% is what they require. If you drop below 36%, you're penalized. Sure, and that means that there would be a fine that would be placed mm -hmm. upon us. Yes, as they, as they give you three years to make it up and then they hit you with a, a, a $5 fine per parcel. Sure. And so, uh, even though you think we're pretty independent, we pretty much operate at the pleasure of the state of Georgia yeah. in that county governments are a constitutional arm of state government, mm -hmm. and and we you know we we follow the instructions of the Georgia Department of Revenue, Georgia Department of Economic Development, the Georgia Department of uh, of uh, Environmental Protection, and other things transportation like transportation and everything that sure. we do. For instance, our transportation, most of the most all the money that we get for paving comes from the state and that money has been diminishing for years and when we had the Tisplos referendum it was because the state didn't have the money to continue with the local assistance road program mm -hmm. and when it failed that means that we have to come up with the first 30 percent of the paving that's provided for us by the state of Georgia and that money is dwindling over time and if you haven't noticed I-75 is kind of falling apart mm -hmm. if you try to go to Memorial Glenwood with drives falling in. So this is nationwide. The infrastructure nationwide needs to be rejuvenated and that doesn't seem to be enough money. Well, well let's go back to what you were talking about just a few moments ago about that with the tax digest that's what determines what a mill mm -hmm. uh, would, would bring in to Walker County. Uh, so where are we right now as far as the uh, amount uh, that you're operating off of as far as the budget is concerned? We set our budget this year at 23 million. Okay, And that's up 
from last year or previous years, is that correct? That is up, yes. Okay. And, and uh, what we had happen is that we were $3 million short on collections. Well, $3 million is three mills. This has nothing to do with what we purchased or sold. Different pots of money go to different things, and the general fund is what, it go, what goes to operate the maintenance and operation of county government. And uh, we were short on sales tax. Back in 1975, when we had a referendum on local option sales tax, and we voted it in, it was to roll back property tax with the amount of sales tax that we collected. And we did pretty well for a while. But as things changed and the interstates grew and retail business around the interstates grew, people in Walker County started shopping in Trenton and in Ringgold and in Fort Oglethorpe and where they had new businesses and where they had everything that they were looking for. And then when Costco and Cabela's and the new strip malls in Catoosa County came along. Pretty soon when you went to Catoosa County you could buy everything you wanted and so you spent all your sales tax dollars in another county and then you came back. Uh, and let's make sure that, that the viewers understand this as well. Now when we're talking about uh, local option sales tax, um, what that is is that it is the penny that is uh, collected in sales tax that is split between the county and the cities. Yes. And, of course, we know that, uh, was it uh, two years ago now that we went through the, or was it a year ago? We, we had a reevaluation That's right, yeah. at, at the requirement of the state, and the county ended up giving up 10% mm -hmm. of our local option sales tax to the cities. So we lost 10%. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've, we lost $3 million to uh, loss of sales and uh, we're having to pay an additional 30%. There's a number of things that have come along that have cost us more money to do the same thing that we used to do for less. And so that's the reason that we came up short. Mm -hmm. And we had no choice but to raise the $3 million with three meals of tax. And, and one more thing, um, with the 30% that we have to come up with as a county, uh, you said that that right there was, is that something that, uh, it, it's a, a new requirement? I mean, in the past, or maybe it was less than that, is that right? We never had to come up with anything until the t loss did not pass. So what, what, what has happened, so that viewers can understand, is that it sounds like that as the state has cut its budget, you know, they, they get out and herald about cutting the budget, what happens is, is that they're putting more and more responsibility on the on the local governing uh, governing authority. Local governing yeah. authorities can operate cheaper than the state, mm -hmm. and so when the state cuts their budget and it rolls back to cities and counties, if people understood the reason they were having to pay more is because they were paying less to the state, that would be that's one right. thing. But that's never been clear. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, you do what you have to do. Sure, but uh, so so what's happening is is you have sales tax dollars that are going out of Walker County. You've got the state who is putting more requirements on the county, but not giving you any more money to work off of. So there are a lot of factors that cause a person in your position uh, to uh, look at, of course, the increases that we've had over the last couple of years. And grants are much more difficult because yeah. there's no money for them. Yeah, it's There are some grants sure. out there, but they're few and far between, and they're mm -hmm. not as much as you used to be able to get. For instance, the Appalachian Regional Commission used to build utilities into an industrial park. Mm -hmm. They don't do that anymore. Yeah. And so in our industrial park, actually, we only got about a million dollars from the state. That's right. Yeah. Of all that has you know, Volkswagen, they got so much money from the state of Tennessee mm -hmm. to build their industrial park. We got one million. Mm -hmm. It's not much when you're building an industrial park. Yeah. So it, it's more difficult, but you would not build it when you could bring in jobs that pay $20 an hour to start, which is a living wage. Yeah. So uh, we did what we had to do. So you were talking about us losing, uh, what was it, three million? Mm -hmm. uh, from, from did not the, collect three million that we exactly. needed. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so what, what sales tax used to bring in, we're not bringing in that kind of money The, the revenue stream was three million dollars short. And so for you to be able to operate the county on the same budget as far as being able to provide the same mm -hmm. services, that's what required the three mil tax increase from last year? 2014. Mm -hmm. That's when we did okay. this. And then, of course, uh, we never expected 
to have to build our industrial park as quickly as we did. Mm -hmm. Audia came in, selected a spot, we secured their coming to Walker County and, and setting up a, a manufacturing plant here. And when they found that Splost had passed, they decided they wanted to move over to the new industrial park. It still had cattle on it at the time. Sure. So we had to break our neck to try to get that thing ready much quicker than we ever thought that we would have to. Mm -hmm. So we had to compile money that we expected to move to spread out over some years. Mm -hmm. But who wouldn't have done it? Yeah. But rather than lose a plant that was going to triple in size and then build a mirror plant just behind it to the west of it, which uh, will bring in jobs that pay people a living wage. And I don't know if everybody knows it, but 73% of the children that go to school in Walker County are on free or reduced lunches. And that That's is right. so sad. These people don't have enough money to send their children to school. Mm -hmm. We've got to get more better wages and better jobs in Walker County. And, and we're being an very successful to do this. Well, it, it, it takes an investment on the county's part uh, in order to see these uh, opportunities come our way. Uh, True. In, in the case of Audia. And we're, we're looking at working with the schools and the chamber, mm -hmm. and we've got to collaborate mm -hmm. and do all that we can do because it takes every facet of government and civic organizations to put together a plan so that we can get these children better educated sure. and get them ready to take the good jobs that we're going to have here in Walker County so they don't have to leave yeah. and no, never come back. Yeah. Well, uh, let's, let's talk about that, um, about the, okay, we talked about how that, how that we've gotten where we are as far as, you know, the uh, taxes that are being levied right now. What do you foresee happening in the future? I mean, do you anticipate uh, another increase, or do you think that we're going to be... Uh, no, I don't anticipate yeah. another increase. The three mil increase that we had over over the years, if I'd have raised it a quarter of a mil a year, we'd be right where we are now. Uh -huh. Might have been easier to swallow, but it wouldn't have made, it would actually save money by not having to do that mm -hmm. for all those years, but it would have been about the same if we'd have done it incrementally a little at a time over mm -hmm. the past 13 years. And, and one thing too, um, you know, just as a, a, a point um, uh, that uh, some people miss is that, you know, this is not something that is, is uh, solely uh, something that Walker County has done. You've got other counties, surrounding counties, that have actually had to increase uh, their, their millage. Uh, for Almost every county in the state yeah. increased their millage the same year we did. Yeah. And we're talking about debt. Mm -hmm. I have a man researching right now to find out what the debt is on all counties in the state of Georgia. Ours is extremely low compared to the rest of the state of Georgia. And I'll have those figures for you before long. So our debt consists of a bond for the development authority. Our debt consists of the SPLOS bond that everybody voted on and it'll be paid off at the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. it, if you do a bond, you've got to be able to pay it back or they won't do one. That's right. So we've got those things secured. The, everything else that we owe is uh, unfunded liability for uh, people that haven't taken their vacations yet or while we're still monitoring the wells at the landfill mm -hmm. or wh when we will lease purchase something instead of just paying cash out for the full amount so that we don't have a cash flow. We're in good shape. I, I don't know why people think we're destitute. We're mm -hmm. really not. And I just want to add one more thing. Uh, I've heard an awful lot about Mountain Cove Farms. Mountain Cove Farms is in the Mclemore Cove. Uh, it is a historic district. It's, it's in the National Register of Historic Places. It has Indian history. It has Civil War history. And the history of the farm alone is remarkable. We are in a position where tourism is about the only way we're going to be able to bring in retail business, so we need all we can get. But when I became a participant in the purchase of the property at the request of the state of Georgia, I felt kind of bad simply because it wasn't in the plan. So we paid $2.5 million for everything, the piece in the middle and everything that we purchased. And then uh, we spent a million dollars renovating it. 
I went out and I brought in non-tax dollars and replaced three and a half million dollars and put it back in the general fund of the of Walker County and I want you to find me another person that's ever done that before. I felt bad but I was between a rock and a hard place. I didn't know what else to do but use money that was already available and it took me a little while to build that money back but I put it back and it's in the books. You can come and look. Yeah. Well Commissioner thank you so much uh, for being with us uh, today and I uh, hope that the citizens of Walker County have learned a little bit more about uh, uh, taxing and, and how difficult it can be and, and really what it means as far as keeping uh, our, uh, our, our county growing and moving forward and so again we hope that you'll come back and be with us uh, another time. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. Hope this episode was insightful and hope that you will join us again on the next edition of Smart Growth Walker County. Until next time Walker County, thank you.